All right, guys, so uh, we're going to continue on with um, some problems that go through uh, conservation of energy and how to approach them. So um, the strategies are basically the same as what we've done in the past. So we're going to look at kind of the problem, the situation, identify what we know. Um, you know, if you don't have a picture, draw a picture. Um, these all have pictures, so we just look at the picture. And then um, we're going to use this, um, what's called an LOL graph. Um, so it's it's not really funny, but um, it is in the shape of an L uh, and then an O and then another L um, and we're gonna we're gonna use that graph to identify kind of the energy uh, all the different energies at one position and sort of the amounts um, the energy at the other position that you're comparing it to and then the system uh, which is what uh, contains all that energy and if there's any energy flowing into or out of the system so let me get rid of all that uh, writing um, and let's just start going through stuff so it says a car is moving at five meters per second so that's the five meters per second here for that's a velocity um, and that's the velocity at point a so if we want to label that velocity at a we can um, and at an instant the cart is motionless at the instant the cart is motionless uh, it runs into a spring it runs into a spring and stops so this is vb and it comes to rest um, it says what is the largest amount the spring could be compressed in um, assume there's no friction. So that's an important idea. So um, we're trying to figure out kind of like how far the spring got compressed in uh, from its original length. We're trying to figure out what that, that distance in is. So um, what I like to do is just identify the system first. So the system is going to involve everything that's going to have energy. So the cart has energy because it's moving. Um, the spring is going to have energy because it gets compressed. Uh, other things that are interacting with the cart and the spring, you could talk about the uh, floor or the ground or the track. Um, that would be especially useful if you had um, friction involved because um, that would be like non-mechanical energy. And then uh, the other thing that you always want to include if you want to include um, gravitational potential energy, you need the earth. So the earth is part of our system too. So we got the cart, the spring, the track, and the earth. Um, now, I'm not saying that all of those things are going to contain energy of our system, but um, they are the things that I would say we should always uh, consider to be important. So it might not be track, it might be a ground or floor or something like that. So at point A, um, we know that this cart is moving, so it's got kinetic energy. So I'm just going to put a little check mark there. Uh, it's got kinetic energy. Um, at position A, um, it is not raised above the ground, so it's not going to fall, so there's no gravitational potential energy. So I'm going to put a zero there for that because we don't have to really worry about it. And then um, for spring potential energy, um, that would be if the spring was compressed or stretched at position A and it hasn't run into it at position A that you would imagine this is like further out at position A. So um, I would say there's no spring potential energy there either. So all of the energy that we have in the system to start uh, is just in the car. So I'm just going to make up some number of bars. I usually just go up four bars or four spaces. Um, just to give it a visual, like that's where all my energy is. Okay, so then we're going to consider uh, the same types of energy at position B, right? So at position B, it says the velocity is zero, so there's no kinetic energy, so this is going to be a zero down here. We can cross that off. Um, gravitational potential energy, it's still not going up or down. It's not doesn't have the ability to fall, so it's at the same level, so that's going to be zero, so we don't have to worry about that one. And then what we do have is we have the spring. So the spring gets compressed um, and it gets squished in, so it's going to have spring potential energy. Or, or, so that's fine. Um, I would say that there is no energy lost in this system. So um, it says there's no friction, so there's no energy escaping out of our system into heat or sound. So if we had four bars over here, according to conservation of energy, we should have four bars over here. And that's just like the idea. So the total energy uh, at position A, before it run, the cart runs into it, uh, should equal the total energy at position B, which is uh, after the cart has run into the spring and stopped. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up uh, an equation based on the chart. So really uh, the total energy we have at A is kinetic. So we have the kinetic energy at A. And that's going to be equal to the total energy we have at B, which is all uh, spring potential energy, so U.S. And that's it. That's that's kind of the um, qualitative uh, approach to this. And now we're going to start doing some numbers and solving for um, the maximum compression of the spring. So we're going to use the equations for kinetic energy, which is like one half mb squared. 
Um, we want to use the velocity at point A, so I'm just going to write a little subscript there for A. Uh, and then we're going to compare that to the spring potential energy at uh, position B. Oh, I should have wrote a B here. Oh, sometimes I write KE. K or KE is the same thing. It's still kinetic energy. Um, it would be 1 half K, little k, uh, X squared. So little k is the spring constant, uh, which they give you. And X is the thing that we're actually solving for. That's how far it gets compressed. So this would be 1 half. Uh, the mass is 8, and the velocity is 5, and we got to square it. And that should equal 1 half uh, this kinetic energy, or this spring constant, sorry, k is 50, and then uh, x is what we're looking for. So x uh, squared is that last term, that's the variable. So we know everything else except that. So we're going to put this in the calculator 5 squared is 25. And then half of 8 is 4, so 25 times 4 is 100. Equals half of 50 is 25. And then we have that x squared term. It's, again, at this point, it's just some algebra, so dividing through by 25. So that drops out. 100 divided by 25 is 4, so 4 equals x squared. And to get just x and not x squared, you got to take a square root of both sides. So when you do that, uh, you will get uh, x is equal to 2 meters. So that car um, compressed the spring by 2 meters, if that is the, um, the situation with that. So um, again, that, that is like the general approach to conservation energy first. Um, you kind of look at it in terms of ideas. Once you get kind of the ideas down, you don't necessarily have to do this part all the time. But in the beginning, I would highly recommend it. You start with the LOL diagram. That's going to set up your total energy equation. And then it's just like listing out, okay, these are the total energies that are on both sides. And we have to make it match up and solve for whatever is missing. All right. So let's try another one here. Uh, so this one says a, car, a rock is shot straight up in the air with a slingshot. Uh, that had been stretched 0.3 meters, assume no air resistance. So again, no outside forces or influences, so it's just going to be my system. Uh, so the system, I would say the rock is going to be having energy. Um, we want to talk about the Earth because it's going to go up into the air, so it's probably going to have gravitational potential energy. And there's a slingshot, uh, so I'll just write SS for slingshot. Um, and, and that's going to have uh, elastic potential energy um, at some point. Okay, So... Um, in the beginning, when you're holding the rock in the slingshot, I don't think there's any um, velocity associated with it. So I would say this kinetic energy is zero to start. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. There, This is our zero level. So if that's height equal to zero uh, at position A, then that means the gravitational potential energy is also zero. So it looks like the only energy we have here is this uh, spring potential energy. And again, you can make this bar however big you want to. I just usually make it a couple spaces up so I can kind of consider what's going on with it. And then um, at position B, we're up here at the highest point. Uh, at the highest point, the velocity is zero, so the kinetic energy is going to be zero, so that can be a zero. The gravitational potential energy, that's going to be there, so it's definitely above uh, this highest point. It's got some height at B, um, and that is actually what we're looking for later on. Um, but uh, I would say once the rubber or the slingshot, the rubber band in the slingshot or the elastic cord in the slingshot is released, uh, it's going to go back to having no potential energy there. So that's going to go away. That would be zero for that one. So if this is four over here, I should make this one four. And like we said before, there are no, uh, like, there's nothing doing work adding energy to the system or taking energy away. That air resistance would be maybe the only thing that would do. Um, maybe some negative work on our system. So um, our equation, again, is just the total energy at one point uh, is equal to the total energy at another point. And uh, there is no work going in or out, and you would just add that in if it was there. So um, it says part B qualitative or quantitatively energy conservation equation. So we're going to write this out in terms of its uh, variables. So it's US um, at point A. Uh, is equal to the gravitational potential energy, UG, at point B. And we're just going to plug in the equation. So it's 1 half uh, K, uh, this would be X squared, and this is the stretch at point A, is equal to uh, MG, and then height at B. All right, so we just have to plug in numbers from the ideas that are up here. So 1 half, the spring constant's 100, 
and then uh, x is 0.3, and we got to square that. And then that's equal to the mass of the rock. The mass of the rock is um, 500 grams. We don't work in grams. We work in kilograms, so that's 0.5 kilograms. So uh, we would, I would give you a number that you wouldn't have to convert, but this problem did not. So 0.5 is the mass, uh, 9.8. Nine point eight is the gravity, and we're solving for height p. So we've plugged in all the numbers that we know. We have one variable that's missing, so that's good. Again, you're going to plug this in your calculator. So 0 0.3 squared would be 0 0.09 times 100 would be nine, and then half of that would be 4.5. Uh, 0 0.5 times 9.8 is 4.9, and then we got the height of b. So again, just some algebra to finish it up, dividing through by 4.9 on both sides. Those are going to cancel, and you get the height of B to be um, 0.918 meters. If you round to 0.92, that's fine. Um, I just run it out to a couple more digits. So um, again, this isn't that different. It just had different energy. So in the first problem, we had kinetic energy going into spring potential energy, transfer, transforming into it. So when you transform, it stays in the system, um, and then now... In this one, we had spring potential energy transforming into gravitational potential energy. So again, staying within our system. The last one here, um, we're gonna we're gonna do this um, a little bit different, and it has um, our our first encounter with kind of energy being lost out of our system. So it says 10% has lost of friction. So this track is removing energy. Uh, from our system. So just looking at the example here, we have a cart uh, at the top of a hill. It's going to roll down uh, the hill and it's going to be moving at the bottom. And we're trying to find the velocity at B essentially. So the velocity of the B is what we're looking for. Um, again, this LOL diagram helps people kind of understand what energies are present. Before you can talk about the energies, you got to talk about what is going to have energy. So the cart is going to have energy um, I would say the Earth, because it has gravitational potential energy. The cart has um, kinetic energy at the end. It has gravitational in the beginning. Um, the, the track um, is removing energy. So the friction along the, the track or the roller coaster, um, that is removing energy. So that's outside. So the track is outside of our system. And the track is going to remove energy out of our system because it says it loses energy. So that means energy is going to come out. So this is going to be um, like negative work or the work done by uh, the track. That's supposed to say track here. If you couldn't read it, I'll try to highlight it again. So T-R-A-C-K, track. All right. So going back at position A, we have our cart. It's got some height above the ground. So... Um, I would say it definitely has gravitational potential energy. The velocity is zero, so that's going to be zero there. Um, and then the spring, uh, there is no spring, so that's not going to be present at all. So that's that. And again, you can start out with any amount here. I made it four, again, just because I like to be consistent. Um, at the end, the cart is moving, uh, so it's definitely got kinetic energy. It's, it looks like at height zero, so that looks like that's going away. There's still no... Uh, spring so those are both zeros here and um the energy like it started out with four it lost some so it's gonna have less and we're not sure exactly what it is but if i did uh 10 percent of four it'd be like 0.4 so if i subtract a little bit there um that's fine so um so again it's just working through the same ideas it's just this time the total energy at the initial position um is not exactly the same as the total at the end because you like you basically just add so um, the total energy plus this negative work done by the track would equal uh, the total energy at B. And you can express this a lot of different ways. You could have moved the work done by the track going to this side. You could put the equal sign here. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just kind of thinking about uh, what's going on. So the total energy is just gravitational. So the gravitational at A. Um, plus the work done by the plus the negative work done by the track. The work done by the track is 10% of the total. So what was the total in the beginning? Um, that's the 10% or 0.1. That's 10%. 
uh, of the gravitational at A. So like that, that is what we're starting out with. So this is like 0 0.10 of the gravitational potential energy at A. So once we find this number here, we're going to be able to plug it in there and then figure out what that 10% is. Um, and that'll get you the total energy at B, which is all kinetic at B, um, which is going to allow us to solve for the velocity. You could have multiple types of energy. It's just like you just need to know um, what what you have and the little factors the, that influence that. So mass, velocity, spring um, constant, how far it's stretched, the height, uh, the gravitational constant, all those things. So if we plug into um, this, it's mgh at A plus negative uh, 0.1 of mgh at A. Uh, so basically, like, the left side ends up being 90% of the total energy that you start with. Uh, and that's equal to the kinetic energy at B, which is 1 half uh, mv squared, and this is the velocity at point B. All right, so we're just going to plug in here. The mass is 40. Gravity is 9.8. The height is 5. Uh, and then it would be 0 0.1. And then these same numbers of 40, 9.8. And 5, because it's still like that first part. Um, at the end, it's just one half. The mass is 40. And the velocity at B is what we're trying to get. So it's a BB squared. So uh, if I plug in those numbers, this is 1960. 1960. Um, if I do point 0.1 of 1960, that's 196. And that equals 20 is half of 40 is 20, and then VB squared. So if I do this subtraction, uh, 1960 minus, I'm sorry, I missed the minus sign there. So it's it's taking away the energy, it's leaving the system. So 1960 minus 196 is 17864 equals 20 VB squared. Again, I'm just talking you through the algebra. You can do this quicker probably in your head. We're going to divide through by 20. Uh, if you do that, you get 88.2 is equal to VB squared. And just like we did in the first problem, we got to take a square root uh, to get the final VB the velocity when it reaches point B. And that's going to be 9.39 meters per second. So that is the solution to our problem. So um, again, if I if you just read this problem and it says what's the final work, like you might not know where to start, but you can always kind of use energy. Energy is universal; it works everywhere. As long as you've established your system and you have uh, enough information to tell like what kind of energy it has at one point and energy at another point, you can compare those points and then solve for whatever idea is missing. So hopefully this is helpful. Just kind of working through some problems. And uh, we will practice some in class. Talk to you later.